today we saw a great miracle that proves the divinity of Christ as I mentioned last week and the week before Christ didn't just open the eyes of this blind man in the gospel but he actually created eyeballs for him because he didn't have any eyeballs this is why he did this very unorthodox medical procedure. Have you seen any, uh, any eye doctor put mud in somebody's eyes? What would you think if an eye doctor would do that? And here, Christ, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who created the whole universe, the one who created Adam out of clay, wants to show the unbelieving Jews that he's the one who created mankind from clay. And just like he created Adam and Eve from clay and the uh, entire universe out of nothing, in the same way now, he spits on the ground, he he makes clay, and he actually fashions eyeballs for this blind man, which is not just a miracle, but a miracle of creation. In the epistle today, we heard about another miracle, the miracle of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. St. Paul was persecuting Christians, and now he's struck by the uncreated light of God, and he becomes blind for at least three days, and then he becomes baptized, and he becomes the Apostle of the Nations. And the reason why the church placed that pericope in today's feast, the feast of St. Constantine, is to show us loud and clear that just like St. Paul was an apostle of nations, St. Constantine the Great was also equal to the apostles. He actually became another apostle of the nations Because when he became an emperor, when he first became an emperor, there was only 10% of the people in his empire that were Christians. 10% were Christians. And by the time he was finished, a great majority of the people of his empire, of the idolaters, became Christians. The great geopolitical miracle, Alexander the Great, a few hundred years before, And that was a geopolitical miracle for someone to go from Greece all the way to India. The same thing was repeated by St. Constantine. The church calls him a saint, while history calls him great. St. Constantine was born around 280 AD in Serbia. His father was Constantius of Chloros. He was highly attracted to the virtue of this Christian bride called Eleni. So he married her, regardless of political cost. It would be costly to him later on, and he would be forced to divorce her if he wanted to climb politically. And that he did, unfortunately. His son Constantine and his wife Eleni were asked to go and stay close to Diocletian so Constantine could be trained in the military arts. But there was a deception there. Diocletian wanted Constantine and Helen near to him, so Constantians would not go against him in any way. They were basically holding him as captives. Constantine became a great military commander, and the battles of Constantine the Great can be equal to the battles of Joshua in the Old Testament. He was formidable in battle because of the prayers of his holy mother, Eleni. Of course, he was not a Christian at first because cause all, the other, all the other political partners of his, Maxentius and Diocletian and Galerius, they were all idolaters, and they were fighting Christianity, persecuting Christianity. So the only thing he could do is pray and continue to be patient. And then at 313, 
when he destroyed the forces of the other emperors, Diocletian and Galerius, by the sign of the cross, as Father Costa said. And after that, the first thing that he did, he issued the decree of Milan. It is no longer legal to persecute and punish Christians. Everyone is free to worship the God that they want. And St. Constantine did not stop at that. He gave children, Maria, human rights. Because up to that point, your parents decided if you could live or not. Up to that point, if a boy or a girl was born and was not accepted by the father, they could easily kill the child with no questions asked. So he said, no, this cannot be. This is illegal. He also made a decree not to kill slaves because slaves will consider the property of their owners and they could kill them with no questions asked. He said, no, it is illegal to kill human beings. And also people on death row in jails, that they were held there without seeing the light of the day. He said, no, that's inhumane. Even though they are on death row, let them outside to see the sunlight. He created social security, even back then, because he cared about the elderly and the sick and those that were weak. And for these things, he was questioned and hated by the idolaters. When Arius began to teach a terrible doctrine that Christ is not God, but a creation of God, then although he was not a Christian, he paid the expenses of 318 bishops from all over the world to come together at the Synod of Nicaea. And there, where our creed was basically put together, that is because of St. Constantine the Great. St. Constantine said that Sunday is the day of the Lord, so everybody will have that day off. Shops will be closed on Sundays. And that remained true even here. In this country, we had the blue laws a few dozens of years ago, <coughs> where Sundays, everything was closed, and people could come to their church and worship their God. At uh, 330, when he went to Rome, because at the time, Rome was still the capital. When he went to Rome, after winning a number of battles, he was asked to worship the idols, and he refused. After the Synod of Nicaea, he would not worship any idols. In his heart, he was a catechumen. Because when somebody became a catechumen, they made the sign of the cross on them. He was sealed and called a Christian. He didn't have to be baptized to be called a Christian. A catechumen, because they are catechumen for many years. St. Basil and also St. Gregory the Theologian, when they were in Athens, they were catechumens. They were not baptized Christians. They were considered Christians because they were catechumens. So the reason why St. Constantine is slender is because after that 330 visit in Rome, he never went back to Rome again. He took the capital, the capital of the Roman Empire from Rome and he put it in Constantinople. And for this, he was never forgiven by the Catholic Church. And that's why, although they consider him a saint, you will never find anybody named Constantine in Italy, perhaps one or two, I don't know, and they're probably Sicilian Greeks. Constantine did a miracle. This was a miracle for someone to put together all these Christian laws and within a few dozens of years to increase the percentage of Christianity from 10% up to 50, 60, and 70%. You see now why the church is calling him equal to the apostles. Again, the West and a lot of the historians, they take their information from the idolater Zosimus, who lived 150 years after Constantine, and he hated him because he destroyed the religion of piety, in other words, idolatry. So a lot of what he wrote about Constantine has no foundation at all. The accusations that he killed his son and he killed his wife, Fosta, was, was a Jezebel, not a, a really good woman, because she conspired with her father Diocletian. And, you know, they accused Constantine that he killed her. There's no historical foundation. Allegations are never, never proven. But again, the people of Enlightenment never really liked Constantine because he favored the East and Orthodoxy instead of the West. 
So please pray to St. Constantine because he wasn't just a great politician, not just a great soldier and warrior, but after he was baptized, he never took his white garment off. He was baptized late in life when he felt that he was ill and his uh, days were counted. So at the age of 63, he left his life as a saint. In the Orthodox Church, we believe in repentance. And even if he made some mistakes, so did the thief on the cross. So did David in the Old Testament. Because of his great repentance, he's deemed a saint of our church. And heaven also answered because his body was buried in the narthex of the holy apostles in Constantinople. And then after his burial, there were all kinds of miracle and mirth streaming from his uh, grave. And many, many people will continue to be healed. So St. Constantine is rightly a great saint of our church and the most popular name in Greece. Amen. <laughs> Oh.